Greetings. I am Richard Mahapatra. I am the managing editor of Down to Earth magazine. Just to introduce the magazine, Down to Earth is a fortnightly English magazine having a Hindi edition. It's published from New, New Delhi and we have been publishing since 32 years now. And it's considered the premier on the politics of environment and development. And we have been reporting and tracking climate change and the whole environmental degradation, the linkages between environment and economic development. And we have a global focus on the southern side. And um, I have been a journalist. I have been reporting for more than 30 years now. And uh, what do you see now? What do you experience now as a journalist, as a communicator? In 30 years' time, things have changed in unprecedented way. The way we communicate, what we communicate, on what we actually focus our communication, everything has changed. You can say that the grammar, of communication has completely changed. At the same time, communication is also turning out to be the most important tool. Not just for the making aware people about the crisis we are going through, it's also to reach, to generate awareness, to bring in social changes and also to impact and to influence public opinions. It has always been, information has always been uh, meant to actually bring in change or to inform people so that, you know, an informed change or change to happen in the policy. But communicating the crisis or what, whatever you want to communicate, was never before such an important aspect of our life. We are in a globalized world. And rather there is an infodemics, as many would call, there is a deluge of information on everything. So how to make sense of that? How to communicate in this busy highway, highway of information? how to target your audience. And what we will be talking about in this particular edition is climate change. We don't call it any more climate change. Not very you know, far in the past, we changed the terminology to climate crisis. And now we call it or refer to as a climate emergency. Climate emergency is, as we all know and feel it and experience it, it's one of the existential crises that the planet is going through. And more so we, the humans. And this is also the most globalized crisis. Which is, which is having the most localized impact. So how to communicate the most globalized crisis in local context? Or as I, I say, how to communicate the most globalized local crisis? As they say, if climate changes, everything changes. So we'll be talking about how to actually communicate climate change and this existential crisis that we all are going through. Let me take through, not long back, two years ago, this was what was called the, it's a code red for humanity. And uh, the head of United Nations had this statement to make, Alram Bells are definite and the evidence is irrefutable. 
global heating is affecting every region on earth with many of the changes becoming irreversible so mark this alarm bells choking our planet every region on the earth the changes becoming irreversible basically we are that's why we call it an emergency because the changes that are taking place in the planet in our environment in our atmosphere are basically irreversible and if when climate changes everything changes then we are into also irreversible changes in our life let me take you through july today is august 1st the july of 2023 is a july like never before i think the planet broke climate and weather records almost every day and what the again the un had had to say on this recently he said that the era of global warming has ended the era of global boiling has arrived and why he made this statement and that should do with the july this july is like never be when the normal things norms are broken we call it a new normal but in july it's not just a new normal being set in that new normal was also broken in at regular interval let me take you through what we broke this is the sum of all fears that we have been hearing about on july 3 July 3rd rather became the hottest day on record for the planet. In the next three days, these records were broken, so they became the hottest days on record. In the next or in the first fortnight of July, the Earth was at its hottest in hundred thousand years. and just look at it july is just over it's not 24 hours also it is past one and most probably the month july will be the hottest ever and if you use the paleo climate data it will be the hottest in at least in 120000 years this was a point of time even the humans were just evolving the homo sapiens our species were evolving now look at in july 40% of oceans are under severe heat waves marine heat waves el nino has come back after 7 years so we expect more warming and el nino is coming after an unprecedented 3 years plus spell of la nina that's the opposite of elin that was also a record sort of thing and if you just put it together its impact who are how who are the people or the species who if you want to quantify who are enduring this never before july weather two third of world populations were impacted by abnormal weather events in july and something else also happened in milestone in july scientists declared that we are very close to declaring another epoch or a new age called anthropocene or the age of humans now this is not not something to celebrate because age of humans means humans have the most stark impact on the planet that's why you are naming an epoch on our own own species that the human so july was really a terrible month in the life of the planet where we broke records and the records were broken which would have what you call on imaginable impacts on our life that's why now it said that the planet is entering into an uncharted territory so 
what this means to us. What am I actually as a communicator? I am, if I am speaking on climate change, where we don't call it a climate change anymore because we endure so much, we call it an emergency. What does it mean in simple data? If I want, if I have to communicate climate change and all this record breaking weather events one after another in just a month and setting up that dreaded El Nino, which will further warm the planet, what it means? Let me put it in few star data. July 2023, this July, it marks the 464th consecutive month with above normal temperature in the planet. It means for 38 years, the planet didn't experience a normal month or normal temperature. It was above the normal temperature. To put it in another perspective, those who are 38 years old now or below have not experienced a normal climate in their life. They don't know what is a normal climate for sale. And the current level of warming, if you put it in perspective of the planet's evolutions and various phases of warming and cooling, this kind of warming was felt 125,000 years ago. And as I said, this was a time when we were just evolving. We are not still the humans what we look like or what we have done to the planet. That was a normal warming phase of the planet. Or the other way, what we inherit now or living with, this planet is hardly recognizable from its pre-industrial period avatar. That's you can say that from 1850 to 1900, that's the pre-industrial uh, phase, which is basically used to calculate all the temperature rise and all the other climatic benchmarks set based on this, because we believe that Industrial revolution started the human-induced warming of the planet. So it just means a planet, which might be 5 billion years, going through naturally phases of climate changes, it just took one species, just 122 years, to alter the planet's climate, which is no more recognizable. And it means we have a new planet. New norms were set by us, by our, our activities. We are just leaving that 12,000 years old Holocene age and we are entering into a new epoch that's called the Anthropocene. And in this age of human, what have we done? 83% of all wild mammals and 50 percent of all plants have been impacted or pushed into extinctions by human activities. Humans are now responsible for altering 75 percent of land-based environment and 66 percent of the marine ecology. So nature provides us many services. That's why we exist. And scientists have this says that in nature has 18 contributions that make us or make us alive or sustain us. Without those, we might not be actually alive or we might not be sustainable. But they say that if the way we have altered, altered the planet, so the nature have failed to or is failing to perform 80% of the services. And immediately after that, if you look at it, what it means to us in the contemporary time, in the next seven years or in 2030, we have some promises to keep, that is the sustainable development goals. This planet that we have altered, the nature that we have altered, the new normal that we have created, will ensure that 80% of the sustainable development targets, goal targets, will not be met due to the biodiversity loss humans are responsible for. 
So this is the state of affair. This is what we call the, we have entered into the uncharted territory. But what I communicate, how I will communicate this crisis, it's a planetary crisis. It's a multidimensional crisis. Carbon emitted barely 200 years ago, it's impacting our developments now. We will not meet 80% of our sustainable development goal targets due to this change in the climate or biodiversity loss. That's I need to communicate. How to communicate this? It's not just that there is an infodemic, it's rather it is that, uh, you know, fabled planetary deluge of information. Look at this, 500 pages of data and technical data in just two IPCC reports. IPCC reports are the statement on the state of climate. And they have 5,000 pages. In 2022, 10,000 documents on climate change were peer reviewed or circulated. Just on the Google search, you have 2 billion searches specific to climate change. Over 43,000 weather events in 220 countries. And those are the countries that are reporting change in the climate change. So this is the scale of crisis which we are attempting to communicate. And we plan to communicate to have an impact to take our messages. How to do this in this humongous world of information? Each of us is a communicator. Each of our communication is a target, is a purpose. How to do that? So if you just go by the planetary crisis, it makes basically every person as a story, climate is everything. So it makes our job of communicating the crisis also very individualized. So it's a basically experiences of 8 billion plus people because everybody is a victim of climate. Everybody has a story to tell of their endurance, of their experience with climate change. So it makes communications basically a big challenge. So let's enter into the next part of it. There are certain things in the communications, particularly communicating the climate change, the climate events, the phenomenon like El Nino, La Nina, and this chain of broken records. Remember the science is very definitive. Climate change is definitive, but it's articulation is political. That's the first principle or the framework under which we have to communicate. Science is very clear, definitive. The planet is warming, there is no doubt about it. But why I say articulation is political? It's political because every year we see the whole world is busy negotiating who should reduce emissions, who should compensate the countries impacted by climate change or weather disaster induced by global warming. Those are the political decisions. Many countries don't recognize climate change, even though they are historically the biggest emitter. And that's a political issue. That's why climate change is the most political subject now. Each communicator, we artificially present it as a technical and dispassionate inquiry. That's the disjoint. If climate changes, everything changes, and everybody on the planet is a climate victim, you cannot tell it as a story or communicate it on a just a technical narrative on how much temperature will go, how much carbon should be emitted, what is the carbon budget. We cannot have that scientific dispassionate inquiry. The whole scientific definitiveness about climate change must be translated or communicated, must be communicated into the context of individual day-to-day -day life or to our life. It's a human story. And people make always human decisions. I migrate out facing disaster after disaster. 
I make a human decision. I make, I make a survival decision. Our ancestor 80,000 years ago made a decision to migrate out of Africa. That was a human decision. That time also there was climatic event that forced them. Currently also we are having the same thing. Politics deal with human decisions and it does a story everything in our domain. So that's the, another connect. If people make human decision and our politics is all about human decisions, then it makes a story everything, a story about everybody and everything in our domain. That's precisely how we will communicate climate change. This is the broader framework. So climate change communication is most complex investigation into things of human beings. My air conditioner will ensure me coolness. But climate change is not all about that. It's impacting all multi-dimensional ways. So that way this communication is about a problem which is very as complex as human and about everything around human. So how to communicate? There is no formula to say. But this is based on, you know, what best which we can actually com communicate an emergency, planetary emergency which impacts all of us. So let me put it in a straight way. When we are communicating, climate change, it is not just one story, devastating floods, devastating wildfire, ongoing heat wave. It is not just a story. Rather, we communicate climate change as the context in which so many other stories will unfold. So instead of I am writing on the heat wave in the Europe telling that it is a standalone story, I am communicating that story in context of climate. So everything that's happening in the world related to weather and climate, to politics, to you know science. So climate change provides you the context in which we communicate actually everything else. So wear the climate change glasses and report from new angles. So you, when somebody is now reporting or communicating the heat wave in Europe, wear that climate change glass and tell that or communicate that. It's precisely due to that. But the, because we tend to communicate it in event-wise, that's why we actually are not effective in communicating the complex climate change impacts. In an, on another complex species of human and its ecosystem of development. Third, look through your climate change lenses and ask these two primary questions. Again, it's not a formula, it's our own experience of communicating to audience to whom we don't know. I'm a journalist, I write for a magazine. My stories are read by people whom I don't know how old they are, how young they are, how well informed they are, or those things. But these two questions can always be. How could affect X climate change? And how could climate change affect X? So basically, suppose my, you know, assuming or my, myself having a lifestyle, how could my lifestyle will change climate change and how climate change will affect my lifestyle? And it's for any, just ask these two questions for communication purpose. If you get to answer these two questions, you are almost putting your communications uh, or, or communicating climate change, not just as a story, but in context, in, and there's so many other stories will unfold people. So ask these two questions must be asked before we communicate any story, any development in the world in context of climate change. 
what could X affect climate change and how could climate change affect X? Next, you know, communication, the classic definition of communi communication is basically it's a two-way traffic. I am speaking to you, and if I'm not listening to back to you, it's not communication. If not having an impact, I'm not able to provoke. I'm not actually getting through my things and not, you know, uh, getting that uh, purpose of communication from you. It's, it's one way communication. It's not called communication altogether. Communication is you who win. I can tell you some things and you participate. Back. I inform you some things, you react or act on that information. What is that? The first principle or the way of communication is the narrative storytelling. That is basically telling the stories of individuals, pulling out the visuals and showing people what really is happening would be crucial in creating the desired impact. Narrative storytelling doesn't mean that you only narrate. It's as I told you, it is various elements, but telling a story in a chronological order is what's all about narrative storytelling. So one individual, somebody struggling with a heat wave in Europe could be a more powerful story of, for communications of climate change. Look at those individuals, pull out those visuals, you know, they're taking baths in public water bodies. What exactly happening to them in their life? A European country is designed more to actually protect from cold, but now they're heating up. What does it mean? And that's where using those experiences, you saw that this is how climate change is going to impact you as an individual. And it's a foundational change. His or her house has to be changed. He has to bring in cooling you know, factors into his life. He might have to buy an air conditioner. He might have to buy another of cooling, alternate cooling system. So narrative storytelling, telling the stories of people in context of climate change. Data visualization and infography. I think that's the biggest, you can say that the way we have to tell the stories in the contemporary world. When attention span is hardly few minutes, a narrative story or a long format written text are losing a bit of impact. Rather people want one stark way of telling you or communicating so that I get it immediately in two minutes, one minute, just at a glance. And that's why the data visualization and infographics are coming out as the biggest tool of telling a story or communication. Third, stories should be mobile friendly and easily shareable on social media. Remember, nearly 90% of information consumption is happening through mobile platforms. Our mobile phone is no more a phoning agent or an instrument. It's our biggest instrument communication. So anything that we communicate, it has to be mobile friendly, has to be created according to your mobile platforms, like somebody actually reading it in this space and giving just that two minutes of span, and you are targeting your communication to have an impact in the two minutes. Just imagine how effectively you have to communicate. And this communication is possible only through data visualization and infographics, basically telling the same story through data, visualized in such a certain way, and also uh, presented certain way that the story is clearly delivered in for an audience which is time star and you have your impact also and social media that's the biggest disseminator of information now in fact if you look at it facebook facebook could be the uh, second largest populated republic after china or india and those are organized people are consuming more and more information through social media Social media postings are having an impact in disseminating things. 
in quickly disseminating things. So your communication has to be actually designed around these new things. Now coming back to the specific one that as I told you, why data, data visualization. You can say that currently we actually communicate in data. When your attention span is less than two minutes, when your uh, consumption platforms in which you consume news or information is less than six centimeter or this mobile phone screen, you communicate in data. So what? what Data sometimes, you know, looks boring, you know, intimidating, but it's powerful also. Just look at it, the data. You know, 1.5 degree centigrade is the currently it's one data that the whole world is. That's all about climate emergency. The whole world, the planet is warming and almost reaching to the point of 1.5 degree. And we have agreed that we should keep it below that. Otherwise, we'll have all the problems. Isn't it so? Sounds very boring. 1.5 degree looks very insignificant. And just look at it. That down to earth maiden just did an analysis of data. Since 1940, we have breached this 1.5 degree climate limit 279 times. Is it, doesn't it sound very really insignificant? and telling and i have to tell the story of 1.5 degree as an emergency so now let's unbundle how to actually unbundle the data and how to use a data point to actually communicate a deadly boring technical one data set can actually be unbundled and could be communicated so what does it mean we have not reached to the point of 1.5 degree, but the planet will, for the first time, see landmass in polar regions. It's warming so much that the polar regions are melting. Arctic, first time we are looking at landmass. New seasons are being added to the planet. Both in Antarctica and Arctic, they are getting new seasons. And in many other places, it's less than 1.5 degree warming. Now just look at that boring data when it's being calculated or visualized or put it in context. It looks so relatable and impactful. So it means 3 billion people will live in stress currently, today. Two thirds of world populations are living right now in an extreme weather event situation. And in just 100 years, we'll exit the livable window of climate change, remember. That's how you can unbundle data and can tell stories around it. So just look at it, 1.5 degrees, one data, and on your screen, you have five points. That's the power of a data-driven communication. So these five points, along with the visualize 1.5 degree, one simple postcard, will be a powerful tool of communication to tell you. It means that my next to next generations will just give them a planet which is not livable. Or you live in heat, heat stress. We'll have new seasons. My spring, your summer, your winter, my rain, everything gone. They'll have new character. That's how basically data can be powerful if it unbundled, visualized, and the messages are targeted around that. Now we call it the paradox, not simply for another line of this. You know, how if you just look at the data and how the impact of climate change can be told through dead, boring, you know, what you call the cold statistics. One historical change has happened in just in four or five years of our life. You know, most earlier, most of the people were displaced internally or even the refugee side also, the migrating to other countries were by conflict and war tradition. That historical change has happened now. Disaster actually displaced more people than war and conflict. 
That's the change in our living history, it's milestone. And that's all about that 1.5 degree and what it means to us. More and more people are living and migrating. Now there is an immigration crisis within a country also among between countries also. Between, within a continent also, then between two continents also. What do you call this the biggest politically since I think the political challenge or the issue is immigration. Climate change is at the center of it. Now this is a basically to a map to show that you know the on the top of uh, in 2020, if you look at it, due to conflicts, how many people in the top uh, map in the world, and the below is basically due to disasters. So the dots you can see it. Disasters are striking across continents, across the planet, displacing more people than the conflicts. Now this is, I'll run through how, what visualization can do to you and if you want to communicate. You know, tons of scientific researches have been done to tell you that it, we need certain temperature to live, to grow in this planet. What we call the climate suitability. You don't expect me to survive in a temperature of 58 degrees. So if you look, look you know, lots of research data have been crunched into a simple map with uh, color coded. So just so that the currently 0.8% of the earth surface is a mean annual temperature of 28 degrees centigrade or more, with 29 people living in that region. So, if you look at it in the color wise, I think suitability is very high. With just this black dot showing up, the suitability is not there for, you know, uh, habitations and human existence kind of things. Now, just to look at it, 2017, what it looked like, the black areas have expanded. So this basically 30, 40 years of data, scientific research have been crunched and visualized into just one map. Somebody who is even letter blind or cannot read or write also can understand and say that in the next less than 50 years, my country will not be suitable for living due to climate. So this is what actually climate, this uh, communications with data, and if you visualize well, you can make a dead, boring data, intense, scientific, you know, uh, stream of you know, research into fascinating communication and can make it relevant kind of this impact. Now, the, what are the trends actually happening? And why we are insisting or emphasizing on communication and in certain ways. You know, the classic examples for a journalist, old journalist like me, is that, he, you know, you write a story in text, but one photograph speaks actually 1,000 words. So if you look at it, now no more one element speaks 1,000 words. Even photo also doesn't speak 1,000 words. Rather, visuals speak 10,000 words. It has become universal language. I just showed you two maps. That if you ask me, they spoke more than 100,000 words because those research papers must have those many words. But in just one map, we communicated that the planet is turning out to be highly not livable. Now look at the video. 62% of internet traffic in 2015 was video, which is reached to 90% in 2021. So video is the new tool. Again, the visuals, the multimedia, the data, then it's been visualized, then being put in video or visual or multimedia mode, 
and again in that short format and communicating to the time star people. And this is precisely what the mobile has changed the way we communicate. Few words. How many words can come here in this less than six centimeter things? Hardly 75 words on the screen I can see. Can I tell the climate crisis in 75 words? No. But I can have a small map that map here and can show you and, and demonstrate that hey, if you are in Africa, it's not suitable. If you are in Europe, you are already born. Just look at this color. So these are the trends that are coming and how we have to communicate that. And in this whole communication, the change, the trends in communication, technology, the way we communicate, data is turning out to be the new script. Because it communicates on its own. It's a neutral influencer. Data is always neutral. If you don't tinker and just you have an honest way of putting data, it's neutral. 1.5 degree, it's a neutral temperature, warm up temperature done by scientists. It communicates on its own now because the whole world is actually looking at that point. Second, data suits are best to new age platform. As I have already explained that people need that your communication, what you are communicating, have to be effective and visualized, more visuals, more sharp, and more hitting on your face. But at the same time, disseminating research through data is also a complex tool to master. Like everything else, we need to master it, but it's definitely, it's a, it's a complex because that whole map that I showed you, as I told you, it, 30 to 40 years of, you know, uh, researches spanning over 200, nearly 200 countries data on migration on climate suitability. And this is how you get it. It's a two things. So now coming back, as you climate change is the most globalized local story, as you say, you know, the carbon that was emitted 200 years ago is still wreaking havoc. Whether you are in America, you are in India, wherever you are, whether you have emitted carbon or your per capita carbon is high or low or even insignificant. We all are a victim. The poor farmers in India pay for the climate change. Sea will rise irrespective of whether it belongs to a country that emitted low. No. So it's a most globalized local story. That's why we need data to authenticate. We need data that it's going to happen. We need research. And out of that research, that point of data, narrative is what the world is looking for, as I told you in the beginning. You need to narrate a story. Definitely the world is looking to get a narrative. And the world is looking for characters who need to be narrated to tell the story. So give human characters to the data. That's the second biggest thing to do. A data is called statistic. If you don't give a human character to it, it doesn't mean anything. What is 1.5 degree centigrade? But the moment I say that, 3 billion people will live in heat stress leading to a near uniform morbidity state. And if I bring in traces of five daily wage laborers who endure temperatures during their day to day life, then the data becomes human. That's why give human characters to the data. And make every human character a global icon. I am a daily wage laborer, or I am the president of a country enduring climate change impacts. Every human character is a global icon for climate change, positive or negative. Make that. So basically tell the everything from the climate change context. 
climate change your context and you are communicating every story from that context climate change per se is not the story <coughs> pardon so how this is the most critical how to target communications now we are fantastic we know how what to communicate how to communicate but how to actually communicate to the audience that we are targeting for and we do come target an audience for communication because we want changes we want impact we want to influence we want to bring in changes in policy programs and we want need to have an impact make our people so provide the right audience audience with the right amount of data in the right format so you need to know your audience the right audience once you know that the right amount of data or information in the right format as well and format we are already speaking about we have spoken about it also second consider how they think about data find it and use it it's very simple to say that the data communicates it's a powerful tool there is no doubt about it but what your audience thinks about the data find it and use it your audience might be informed and all it could be an audience of say policy makers or an audience of scientists who will, who will see the data in a different way but your audience could be the mass population for whom the data will have a different meaning so think about data from your audience perspective find it out and use it then the next one is how much data to present in what format greatly influence how the information impacts the end user i might have a 100 pages long research paper full of data but which data and how much data and in which format based on that research i have to communicate that you have to decide not all of people will read the 100 pages scientific studies that you might have commissioned you might have done but you need to change want to influence your research want to influence using your research so how much data to present in what format greatly influence how the information impact for end user so basically i might be a scientist i am a journalist i am a researcher i am a policy maker i might have tons of great knowledge but i need to do this fast to know that the end user is always for whom we communicate so that's the audience that's the target and that decides which format and how much so be strategic have a plan for how you will deliver data driven research articles there is no formula to it but strategic about what your audience the audience preference and all these things so have a plan so be strategic about your audience have a plan how you will deliver your data driven research and articles and in which format and in which quantity you don't have to have a large organization or budget to tell data driven research effectively that's very sure about it because we have plenty of you know organized platforms that on which we communicate and uh, you know the tools are really it's a day to day tool for us like your editing tools or your you know the phone itself the normal editing you know softwares and all these things but you have to be strategic about gathering exploring visualizing and contextualizing your data so if you put it in one sentence this communication in a new time or communicating a new crisis so it has to be this sentence that strategic about gathering exploring visualizing and contextualizing your data i think that's how you have to put your this is how the formula of the whole process of uh, communication has to go through this process and thank you very much for this for any queries put me a note and i'll be more than happy to answer you so it puts basically communication at the core of this crisis of making aware about this emergency situation that we are going through thank you